the pig's digestive system. Pigs don't eat grass as their main diet like cattle and sheep. Although pigs can eat grass, they won't thrive in it alone for too long since it cannot give them all the nutrients they need. The pig's digestive system is exactly the same as humans. So the stages in the digestive system are the mouth, stomach, liver and gallbladder, pancreas, geodenum, small intestine, large intestine the rec and the rectum. So the first stage of digestion is in the pig's mouth. Physical and chemical digestion takes place here. So what takes place in the mouth, physical digestion, chemical digestion, starch to maltos and amulus. The pig's teeth are used in physical digestion. They physically digest the food by chewing. Like humans, pigs have four different types of teeth. Incisors, canings, premolars and molars. To help remember their dental formula, we say three, one, four, three, top and bottom. So these, this is a diagram of the pig's teeth. So the incisors, canings, premolars and the molars. So what are the functions of the different types of teeth? So the incisors are used for biting. Canines are used for tearing up meat for example, red meat, which is a form of protein, premolars, which are used to crush and grind food, and also molars, which are used to crush and grind food. Canines being presented tell us that pigs need a source of protein in their diet. So while pigs chew their food, chemical digestion is taking place. In chemical digestion, pigs have three salivary glands, as shown in the diagram. The glands produce an enzyme called amylase. This enzyme breaks down starch into maltose. The more times the food is chewed, the more it is chemically digested. Amylase is also a lubricant, which wets the food and makes it easier to chew and swallow. The food is passed into the esophagus and is prevented from going into the lungs by the epiglottis. So next, the food goes into the stomach. Protein is made up of 20 essential amino acids. In pigs, 10 of these are essential. They cannot make them themselves and they must be provided in their rations. When food enters the stomach, it gets covered in hydrochloric acid and pesphagen. The hydrochloric acid keeps the stomach at a pH of two, but also kills many microorganisms. The hydrochloric acid converts the inactive pesogen into active, active pesogen, which converts proteins into amino acids. This acidic material can remain in the stomach for hours, but will be eventually released into the duodenum. The mucus lines the stomach and prevents self-digestion, and the stomach contractions turn the food into a soupy mixture called chyme. So next, the liver and the gallbladder. The function of the liver is that it produces bile. Bile is stored in the gallbladder. Bile is formed from the remains of dead red blood cells. Bile enters the geodenum through the bile duct. The function of bile is to break down fats to increase the surface area for enzymes to work. Bile also neutralizes the chyme coming from the stomach as it is acidic. So this is a diagram of your liver and the gallbladder. So the pancreas. Pancreatic juice, also known as salt sodium bicarbonate, helps neutralize stomach acids. The pancreatic juice is made of a number of enzymes such as amylase, lipase and trypsin. So this table, we have the enzyme, what it acts on and what it produces. So trypsin acts on protein and produces peptides and amino acids. Amylase acts on starch and produces maltose and lipids acts on fats and lipids and produces fatty acids and glycerol. The geodenum. This acidic chyme now enters the geodenum. 
where a liquid called bile gets added to it. Bile is made in the liver and its function is to break down fats and fat soluble vitamins. The pancreas releases lipids, which is an enzyme that breaks down fats. The pancreas also releases amylase, which breaks the maltose into glucose. The products of the pancreas and the liver enter the geodenum. Now the liquid enters into the small intestine. So the small intestine, the chyme enters into the small intestine. The small intestine consists of the geodenum, which is 25 centimeters long, the geogenum, which is 5.5 meters long, and the ileum, which is 5.5 meters long. The small intestine is a long tube that is, that is responsible for removing the water and fully digested material from the chyme. Digestion is completed in the first section of the ileum. Carbohydrates are broken down into monosaccharides, proteins are broken down into amino acids, and fats are broken down into fatty acids and glycerol. glycerol. The lining of the ileum contains of many villi, which increase the surface area for absorption. So this is uh, the geogenum and this is the ileum. So these are your small intestine and the geogenum. So this is it in a pig's, the pig's stomach, the geodenum and your gilium and your ileum. So this is what a villus looks like. So this, the lacteal goes up the middle and then you have your blood capillaries. So it's the lining of the small intestine. So the large intestine. The large intestine consists of the colon and the cecum. The cecum is the first part of the pig's large intestine. The cecum acts as a reservoir for chine, which it receives from the ileum. The main function of the large intestine is the absorption of water. The chine that passes through the small intestine and into the large intestine initially is very fluid. The colon reabsorbs water from undigested food. And finally, the last stage of the digestive system is the rectum. So the rectum is the large, is, sorry, is the last stage of the digestive system. The rectum is surrounded by large bands of muscle which help to mo move the digestive waste, which are feces, out of the body. The anus is the exterior opening of the digestive system where the feces leave. So this is the anus and the rectum. And that's all on the pig's digestive system. Thank you.